In this video, I'm going to talk about Uber accident claims and settlements. I'm going to actually tell you about some real cases and give the settlement amounts for those cases. I'm going to talk to you about Uber insurance and other insurance, how it applies if you're in an Uber accident. I'm going to talk about why Uber may be keeping settlements confidential and how it may affect those claims. It's interesting to note that if you look online, at least when I looked online, I could only find two actual Uber settlement accident amounts. That's a very, very small number of actual settlement amounts, given that Uber has millions, if not or hundreds of thousands of drivers on the road. One of those was a bicyclist who was hurt in a state other than Florida. I practice in Florida. This happened in California. And that settlement was allegedly for half a million dollars. And then another article was published in a newspaper and the settlement was about $6,000. Now, although you can't find that many settlement amounts online for Uber cases, you'll find plenty of information on Uber lawsuits. Uber drivers have been sued throughout the United States of America and many different states. But what a lot of people are interested in is Uber settlements. I believe the reason that Uber settlements, you won't be able to find much info on the actual amounts, is because Uber is likely keeping these settlements confidential. Now, when an injured person settles at the end of a claim, the insurance company typically will have them settle, sign a release, which in exchange for a, month, for a payment, the injured person signs the release and the case is resolved. Typically, in most auto cases in Florida, which is where I practice, it is not normal for an auto accident for the settlement to be confidential. In these Uber cases, I'm assuming that Uber is requiring these settlements to be confidential. Otherwise, I think we would see a lot more settlement amount information given the number of Uber drivers on the road. Now, according to an article by an online website, SFGate, uh, an Uber executive has said that, that the Uber requires settlements to be confidential and that it's standard in releases. In one case, an Uber passenger was allegedly injured. This case was mentioned by, again, the online site SFGate. Apparently, Uber offered $3,000 for the medical expenses and $3,000 for the passenger's agreement to not to disparage or speak badly about Uber. Why is Uber requiring settlements to be confidential? My assumption would, would be so that Uber uh, just maintains a very good reputation, although personally, I don't think it's really a big deal if the settlements were not confidential. However, and what I'm about to say is not tax advice. For injured people, if they agree to have a settlement confidential, there can be tax consequences that can significantly hurt the injured person's tax amount that they'll have to pay. They need to speak with a CPA, certified public accountant about the tax repercussions. But Signing a document if there's a confidentiality clause can be a huge disadvantage for someone who's injured. And again, it's something, this isn't tax advice at all, but it's something that an injured person should really speak with their public accountant about, a certified public accountant, because it can have a very big uh, negative effect on the claim, on the settlement. And it's something that an injured person should want to know prior to settling, settling a case, case if confidentiality is going to be asked for. In one case not involving Uber, there was a $200,000 settlement. It actually involved basketball superstar Dennis Rodman. And the case settled for $200,000 and there was a confidentiality clause in there. And an actual tax court found that $80,000 of that $200,000 settlement was taxable. So again, while this is not tax advice at all, an injured person should definitely speak with an accountant prior to ever signing a confidentiality agreement. It's very important to know that Uber drivers and Uber, Uber passengers have different rights. Typically, a passenger can almost never be at fault where a driver can be at fault. And in a state like Florida, uh, if, a, if the driver's at fault, the, the percentage uh, fault that he has, his case value is reduced accordingly. So if a case is worth $30,000 and the Uber driver is 50% uh, at fault, his case is worth half of that, $15,000. Uh, Uber accident settlements and claims have a huge uh, dependence on the state where the accident occurred. Meaning, where I practice Florida, we have a certain set of laws. In fact, I'm going to get into it in a little bit. Florida has its own rideshare statute that applies to Uber and Lyft. This video is on Uber, so that's what I'll concentrate on. But the difference between claims and between one state and another can be huge. What's the same? If someone gets injured, an injury is the same regardless of the state that you're in. 
And typically, liability, for the most part, there's exceptions, is very similar from state to state. A car accident is a car accident. Traffic laws are obviously different between state from state and citations, but, but what really gets different is the insurance requirements, whether there's no, whether it's a no-fault state like Florida, which I'm going to get into in a little bit, whether you need a permanent injury, I'm going to get into that as well. But just understand that this video concentrates on Florida and every state has different laws and it can mean the difference between thousands of dollars in a case. Are Ubers covered with insurance? To answer this question, we're gonna take a look at the state of Florida, which is where I practice. If an Uber driver is logged on to the app but hasn't yet accepted a ride, uh, the Uber is covered with $50,000 of bodily injury liability insurance per person and $100,000 of bodily injury insurance, liability insurance per accident. That bodily injury liability insurance would be paid out to someone who the Uber driver injured. People that he could hurt who may be entitled to this money could be a pedestrian or could be someone in another vehicle. The Uber driver is covered with PIP and there's $25,000 of property damage liability insurance. Now these insurances benefit, other than PIP, the liability insurances benefit the person who was injured due to the fault, if any, of the Uber driver. PIP would apply to the Uber driver regardless if he was at fault or not. And the Uber driver typically would be the one who benefits from that. Now, most Uber drivers typically don't have their own personal insurance. One of the nice things about this Florida statute, this law, is that it says either the Uber driver or the Uber itself has to provide insurance and the Uber policy needs to be primary. So Uber can't just point the finger and say, hey driver, you don't have insurance, you're out of gas for these types of liability claims. For accidents prior to July 1st, 2017, it's likely gonna be easier for an injured person in Florida uh, in an Uber accident to get money for pain and suffering, all things equal. If you take 100 cases before July 1st, 2017 and 100 cases after July 1st or starting on July 1st, 2017, it's gonna be easier for the injured person to get awarded money for pain and suffering for the accidents before. That is because uh, Uber, I do not believe that they had PIP on their vehicles and the law never required them arguably to have PIP on the vehicles. Thus, the injured person did not need to meet what's called the tort threshold in Florida to get money for pain and suffering. Essentially, the injury did not need to be permanent or uh, permanent or significant scarring or disfigurement. After July 1st, 2017, like I said earlier on, if an Uber, this is, I'm still talking about cases where an Uber driver has the app on but has not started, has not selected yes and accepted the ride or, have pass, or has passengers with him. If the Uber uh, driver has the app on but hasn't accepted uh, the ride yet, so he's just cruising around or parked waiting for a ride, he has PIP. So it's, if, the in, if the Uber driver gets injured, $10,000 of personal injury protection insurance will pay his doctors and or his loss wages, so up to $10,000. The disadvantage if you're injured by that Uber driver who's logged in but hasn't yet engaged in the prearranged ride is if you're hit by him, you likely but not always need to have a permanent injury in order to get money for pain and suffering. That means typically a doctor needs to say your injury is permanent. A lot of cases can go to verdict, go to trial and verdict, and the injured person gets zero because the jury says, although we feel bad for you that you had pain for a week, a day, three months, the doctor either did not say your pain is permanent, or even if he said it is permanent, the defense doctor who Uber's insurer or Uber driver's insurer uh, could hire could say your injury is not permanent and the jury could side with uh, that doctor. And then in many cases, if the Uber driver has his app on but hasn't yet accepted a ride, causes the accident, you may get zero for pain and suffering. Now, if you have a very large injury, such as uh, surgery, the odds are significantly much more likely that, you, that you'll be able to meet that permanent threshold. But just because uh, you may not think that you have a permanent, permanent injury, you still may have one. Ultimately, it's up to the doctors. One of the things that many uh, insurance adjusters look at is the amount of damage to the car. Although cases can be won even if you have zero damage to the car, it typically, all things equal, at least for pre-suit settling before a lawsuit or in the early stages of a lawsuit, helps if the car is significantly damaged, all things equal, because the theory goes that the insurance adjuster or jury looks at a car and they see a very badly damaged car and they say, oh my God, 
if this car was so badly damaged, this person could have been, their body could have been so badly damaged versus, versus them looking at a picture of a car with zero damage on it and someone saying that now for the next 30 years, they're going to need uh, medical treatment on a monthly basis and be on pain medicine when an insurance adjuster looks at both cars or a jury looks at both cars and says, where's the damage? Now, even with little damage, uh, you can still potentially have a great case, but all things equal, the better the damage, the better the personal injury case. Although accidents are terrible, the great thing for passengers uh, is that Uber, through James River Insurance, has a $1 million uninsured motorist insurance policy. And this is public information. You can go to Uber's website and they ha actually have the certificate of insurance for whatever state the injury occurs in. But for example, for Florida, I know for certain that it's $1 million. Now, once an Uber driver has accepted a ride, uh, it is now on the books starting uh, July 1st, 2017. They have to have $1 million of bodily injury, uh, liability insurance, and property damage insurance. So the most that uh, the insurance policy has to be is $1 million for injuries to others and property damage to others. Property damage consists of damage to uh, the other's vehicle, the other person's vehicle. It could be uh, if they have a broken watch, a broken laptop, broken glasses, and bodily injury, of course, uh, would pay for the injured person other than the Uber driver. It would pay for their um, medical bills, their out-of-pocket medical bills. It would pay for their lost wages and pain and suffering. Now, if an Uber driver injures either a passenger or someone, a pedestrian or someone in another vehicle, that individual who is hurt can sue the Uber driver directly. But what's interesting with Uber is they have James River Insurance Company as their insurer, who happens to be what's called a surplus insurer. A surplus insurer is an insurer that, in, that essentially assures high-risk um, events that many other auto insurers won't insure. Typically, in an auto accident case, you can't sue the careless driver's insurance company. However, with a surplus insurer, such as the James River Insurance Company, the surplus uh, statute does not say that you cannot sue them. In most auto accident cases against, let's say, someone insured by State Farm, Geico, Progressive, a company like that, if uh, their insured causes your injury, you cannot sue Progressive or State Farm. You can only sue their uh, insured, the person who caused the incident. However, with the James River Insurance Company, since they're a surplus insurer, you can literally sue the Uber driver and also sue James River Insurance Company. That may add, add value to the case because a jury would get to hear that uh, insurance is in play Whereas uh, in an auto accident case against, let's say, someone insured by State Farm, uh, the jury may not know that there's insurance and may feel more guilty punishing uh, a driver who may be uninsured. If you can prove the Uber uh, driver did something wrong, you're entitled to lost wages, both past and future medical bills out of pocket in Florida, both past and future uh, pain and suffering. If you can, if the case requires it, if you can meet the, the tort threshold of permanent injury, again, some cases don't require that. Um, God forbid someone dies, funeral expenses, pain and suffering, uh, loss of enjoyment of life. Now, for Uber drivers or passengers that are injured, a lot of the forms that may need to be completed can be found on the Uber app. If an Uber driver has the app on but hasn't yet accepted a ride, he would be entitled to PIP insurance through Uber. He'd also be entitled to PIP insurance through his ride share coverage if he had it. Most drivers in reality uh, will not have it because it costs money and uh, most people driving for Uber are, are not people that have a lot of money. They're doing it to earn money, which I commend, but uh, the reality is they're not going to have the ride share insurance through their personal uh, auto policy. Uh, Uber may require you to fill out a PIP, personal injury protection insurance uh, application. Personal injury uh, protection insurance pays up to $10,000 of medical bills and lost wages. The application shouldn't be that bad to fill out, but it's something that needs to be completed. Uh, you can send them an application if you choose to uh, complete your own, or you can wait for Uber to send you the application that needs to be complete, completed. If you're making an uninsured motorist insurance claim with uh, the James River Insurance Company, who would be Uber's insurer, uh, you would likely have to fill out an affidavit stating you don't have any other uninsured motorist insurance or you would have to list your uninsured motorist insurance so they can determine which uninsured motorist insurer is responsible to pay first. I settled a case with Lyft for $70,000. A large part of that settlement, um, $45,000, was from Lyft's uninsured motorist insurance company, but one of the things the Lyft adjuster 
required me to do, my client to do, was complete an affidavit. In his case, he didn't have any other uninsured motorist insurance, so we had to fill out that affidavit. I imagine Uber would require you to fill out the same uninsured motorist affidavit, and the key is to fill that out in advance. I wouldn't wait for Uber to send it to you. Um, like any other case, auto accident case, give them all your medical bills and records as soon as possible. Let them set the reserve so they can set aside money to pay your case. Uh, the sooner, the better. It takes time for insurance companies like Uber's insurer, the James River Insurance Company, or whatever insurance company you're dealing with, to assign money to pay your case. The sooner you get them all the bills, records, the better. If you're injured by an Uber driver while they're engaged in a ride after they've accepted the ride, um, you're dealing with a million dollar bodily injury liability insurance policy. The disadvantage with that is that the case may take longer to settle because Uber really, or James River Insurance Company, doesn't have much pressure to quickly pay uh, the money. Meaning, let's just say your case is worth $40,000, whether they pay the $40,000 in a month or a year, they really don't face a huge uh, negative consequence. The positive, again, is that there's a million dollars of insurance, and in Florida, that's great because so many people are uninsured or underinsured. Now, if you're dealing with a case where the Uber driver has the app on but has not accepted a ride, you're dealing with a $50,000 per person liability policy or $100,000 per accident. The advantage of that for the injured person is if you are have an injury that's worth more than 50 grand per person or 100,000 per accident, the odds Uber is going to pay you quicker or James River Insurance Company is going to pay you faster are it's much more likely the settlement will happen quicker because if they don't pay uh, you and your case is worth uh, significantly more than the limits, whether it's 50,000 or $100,000, then the driver who they insure could end up suing them for the difference. They don't want that. The other thing is if you're dealing with uh, an accident where the Uber driver uh, has the app on but is not yet engaged in a ride, another advantage is that I think Uber is going to, James River Insurance Company is going to be less likely to pressure you to um, sign a confidentiality agreement. Now, they may still ask for one, but you can always tell them no. And then they have the ability, they should be protecting their insured and they should not be insisting on you signing a confidentiality agreement. You can always, if necessary, file a consumer complaint with the Florida Department of Insurance if you feel Uber is not treating you fairly. Uh, that may help them decide to do the right thing. If you're dealing with a million dollar policy, again, uh, Uber is, most cases, has going to, James River Insurance Company, Uber's insurer, is not going to have too much pressure to, qu pressure to quickly pay you. The exceptions would be in a catastrophic injury case like a horrible brain injury case or a wrongful death where the value clearly exceeds a million dollars. Then Uber is less likely to require confidentiality and they're less likely to delay the settlement. Types of injuries that are worth more than $50,000 uh, per person that if the Uber driver is uh, not engaged in a ride, meaning he has the app on but he hasn't yet, he or she hasn't yet accepted it, are going to be if there's surgery to a broken bone, typically like a tibial plateau fracture, that's a fracture of the bone beneath the kneecap, or rotator cuff surgery, or lower back fusion where the, 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 the vertebrae are fused, um, things like that. Surgery on a fracture, typically uh, uh, James River should be quickly paying that $50,000 per person. If you're injured by an Uber driver, or if you're in an Uber, and you're injured by another driver, you typically have four years to sue the party whose negligence or carelessness caused your injury. This is again in the state of Florida. If you're going through Uber's uninsured motorist policy, for example, let's say you're a passenger or even the driver uh, in the Uber and it's engaged in a ride, and another vehicle is at fault and they're uninsured or underinsured, you'll have five years to sue the James River Insurance Company in Florida. Uh, if PIP, if you're making a PIP claim, you also have five years again in Florida. Things get a little bit different if you're an out-of-state visitor with your own uninsured motorist policy and you're injured in Florida, then the uh, time limit from the out-of-state law or policy is what's going to govern the time that you have to sue uh, the uninsured motorist insurer for out-of-state. When deciding whether to get an attorney or not, one of the advantages of not hiring an attorney is you don't have to pay an attorney's fee, so you would likely, for example, in Florida, save 33 and a third percent of the total settlement before a lawsuit, 40% of the total settlement after a lawsuit, but that's where the fun ends. Not hiring an attorney, you're likely going to have anxiety about knowing how much your case is worth. You may be wondering if you're settling on the cheap. You may not know how to waive, possibly waive or reduce your medical liens. 
uh, or bills that can result in a savings or negotiate them. Uh, you may miss uh, an, uh, a party who may owe you money. You may not follow Florida's uninsured motorist uh, insurance statute and you may void your uninsured motorist insurance coverage and the list goes on and on and on and on. You may miss a medical provider from the hospital. Um, many things can happen. So I would encourage you to hire a lawyer. I'm now going to talk about a few accidents involving Uber. This is not my case, but it's a very interesting case involving Mr. and Mrs. Day who were in an Uber. They had ordered an Uber. Literally, the Uber started driving right here and a car came um, going straight and hit the Uber vehicle. Miss Day allegedly had a brain injury and four neurosurgeries. Her husband, Mr. Day, who was a gynecologist, had a leg fracture and surgery because they uh, were passengers in an Uber, likely made a claim against the Uber's bodily injury liability insurance. Again, Uber through James River, uh, now uh, based on the law, has to have a million dollars of insurance. So there was likely a million dollar liability insurance policy. Um, I believe they also made a claim against the driver who was coming there this way. If he had a uh, small liability insurance policy, it likely paid. I believe they made a claim against the Uber driver's personal insurance policy through GEICO, but I believe GEICO denied coverage because, again, like most insurer, like most individuals, uh, a lot of people don't tell their uh, personal auto insurer that they drive for Uber and then, Uber, and then your personal injury insurer will likely deny coverage. Now, it's my understanding that GEICO, the Uber driver's personal injury uh, insurer or auto insurer, paid for the one day uh, of his hospital, um, stay and then they denied the rest of PIP and the, the day's liability claim, but they can do that. The driver who was heading straight this way um, also made a claim against the Uber driver. And if you look at the court documents, you will just see the case was dismissed. Now, every case that I've looked up and, and seen online uh, just says the case was dismissed, which typically in, in, a, in, a, in a case like that, that's worth a significant amount of money, likely means a settlement occurred, but you won't be able to find out the number. Here's a diagram of this case. Mr. Trujillo he was the driver that was uh, going straight. The green car was the, I'm just using the color green here, but it, it, it uh, represents the Uber vehicle and it was coming this way. It's just a diagram so you can better understand how the incident occurred. It's not exact here, there's two lanes, but in actuality, Collins Avenue, which is in Miami Beach where the accident occurred, has three lanes. Um, the days were from out of state, although they may not have had to use their uninsured motorist insurance coverage. I don't know whether they did or not, but if they do, the time limit to sue under their uninsured motorist insurance, anyone from out of state, is going to be based on the out-of-state law, like I had mentioned earlier on. Now, the Uber driver got a ticket in this accident, and while that might seem exciting to the injured person, the ticket cannot be used in the personal injury case. But in reality, insurance adjusters place a heavy emphasis on who received the ticket, although the most important thing for them is how the accident happened, what the witnesses say, what the crash uh, diagram says in the, in the, uh, the crash report. In this case, the day sued for past and future pain and suffering, past and future medical bills, and past and future lost wages. Now, the fact that he was a gynecologist, he likely earned uh, a lot of money a year, so he probably had a large lost wage claim. Uh, Miss Day was a nurse, and she likely had a lost wage claim as well, particularly given the fact that she had a brain injury. Miss Day's case was likely worth more than her husband's because she had four surgeries uh, versus one surgery. All things equal, the more surgeries you have, the higher the full value of the case. Now this is a case where uh, an Uber passenger, Pablo, was in a car driven by Adam, heading straight, and then ultimately made a left-hand turn, and Chico was driving in the opposite direction, and they crashed. Pablo unfortunately died after the car burst into flames, and it's a horrific accident. Uh, in Florida, when you pass away, um, and Pablo was 20 years old, his parents have the right to bring a wrongful death claim. Someone gets appointed personal representative of the estate, and in a case like this, the large claim is for pain and suffering. So each parent, parent was likely awarded or received a lot of money uh, in what I believe was a settlement. If you look at the court records, it says the case was dismissed by agreement of the parties. But essentially, uh, the personal representative of Pablo's estate, the gentleman who died, sued uh, the Uber driver and James River Insurance. The company likely stepped in for them and likely paid the million dollar limits due to the fact that these parents have lost their 20 year old uh, son. Uh, I believe Pablo also sued Chica, and if she had insurance, her insurance company would step in and likely pay 
the policy limits as well. And I believe Pablo also sued the owner of the car just for the sole fact that they own the car. In Florida, if you own a car up to a certain amount, you're on, you're, you need to pay for damages caused by the driver's negligence. Now, Pablo's parents also likely received the PIP death benefit through their own insurance company, uh, which likely paid them its $5,000. This is the overhead view, not from the actual day of the accident, but it was a cyclist that was allegedly hit by uh, someone driving for Uber. The cyclist was allegedly claimed that um, she was in the lane here, the green lane, and going to um, heading straight here. And the car was in this lane uh, when it should have been in this lane, making a right, and the car made a right and hit her. She suffered internal bleeding and elbow fracture, which required two surgeries, uh, lacerations, and she was badly hurt. Uh, according to um, her attorney online, if you read about it, uh, the initial offer was $350,000, and then it got increased to $500,000. And again, that's such a large offer because her injuries were so bad. Most cases don't result in a $500,000 settlement. So um, her attorney sued, and that's another reason why you may need an attorney. Not every case uh, is able to get resolved before a lawsuit. And uh, I believe that no individual should be filing a lawsuit for a serious injury leak injury claim on their own. To me, it's a disaster. Uh, the court system is very complicated and it takes years of experience understanding how lawsuits work. Now, let's assume this accident happened in Florida. If the Uber driver was had the app on but wasn't engaged in uh, a ride and her injuries were a broken elbow and two surgeries and other stuff, likely the James River Insurance Company would quickly pay the $50,000 limits. If the Uber driver was uh, engaged in a ride, then the limits go up to a million dollars in Florida and likely the settlement would take longer. The bicyclist would be able to get paid for pain and suffering, uh, lost wages and medical bills. This accident did not happen in Florida, but if it did, uh, if the Uber driver was logged on to the app but hadn't yet accepted the ride, the bicyclist would be able to make a PIP claim for up to $10,000 of medical bills and wages through the bicyclist's own insurer. If the bicyclist did not own a car, I'm referring to car insurer, if the bicyclist did not own a car but lived with a relative, then their, that car's auto insurance would pay up to $10,000 of medical bills and lost wages for the bicyclist. If the bicyclist did not own a car or live with any relative who owned a car, then the Uber driver, again, if he's had the app on but not engaged in a ride, that insurance would pay up to $10,000 to the doctors and or the bicyclist's lost wages. The bicyclists all could also pursue a personal injury claim against the driver for pain and suffering and additional out-of-pocket uh, lost wages and medical bills. Another accident that was not in Florida, a young girl, Sophia Lou, who was six years old and her mother were walking allegedly in a crosswalk and a Uber vehicle hit her. She was killed and the mother was injured and incurred $500,000 of medical bills. Uh, allegedly, the case was settled and it was um, dismissed in court. It's a very tragic and sad situation, but I'm going to go over the facts and how this claim may have played out if the crash happened in Florida. If the Uber driver in this case had the app on but wasn't engaged in a ride, then $50,000 would be payable to the estate of the six-year-old girl, Sophia Liu, and $50,000 separately would be payable, would be paid by Uber's insurer to um, her mother, Uber's insurer would quickly pay this amount of money so they could avoid any bad faith uh, exposure. So the settlement would likely happen very quickly. If the mother also had her own car with uninsured motorist insurance, she could also make a claim against that even though she was a pedestrian. It still pays even if she's a pedestrian and that would be on top of whatever money uh, Uber's um, bodily injury liability insurance paid. Now, if the Uber driver had uh, had already accepted a ride or had passengers in, in the car, I believe in this case, uh, the parents would get uh, the million dollar policy limits because the case is worth uh, $1 million or more. And I think that they would hopefully do the right thing and pay the million dollars to avoid any bad faith exposure. The parents uh, would be entitled to a $5,000 PIP death benefit, which would be payable to either one of them. In addition, uh, $10,000 if she survived and had medical bills, $10,000 from the PIP of the parent's own insurer would, uh, own auto insurer, would pay for uh, medical bills. If they didn't own a car or live with anyone who owned a car, if the little girl Sophia didn't live with anyone who owned the car, then 
the Uber driver, if he was uh, in, had the app on but not engaged in a ride, would pay uh, PIP benefits to her, her state. 